Good evening and welcome into this week's edition of Armchair Quarterbacks on DTC3. I'm your host, Tom Duggan, along with our panel today, the coach, Chris Vance, and Darvin Gill getting set for week four of high school football. We've got DeKalb County, Cannon County, district border rivalry. Love those border rivalries. And, uh, Coach, you know, a couple of games we always have every year, Gordonsville, Smith County, Cannon County, DeKalb County, and you always know during those rivalry games, you get the very best of these teams. They just want to beat each other so badly. The energy on both sidelines is tremendous, and even though the games may not be barn burners or very exciting or close to the end, uh, you can always tell in the crowd, both sides, both sidelines, it's just pumped up in excitement. Got a great show lined up today. First of all, we will have Cannon County head football coach T.J. Daniel to talk about the Lions. And, Darvin, a tough loss for Cannon County against Red Boiling last week. But, again, you factor in this game against DeKalb County, and you know the players certainly going to be fired up, and it's a great opportunity for Cannon to try to get their season. You know, they're still 0-0 zero and zero in district right now, so basically it's almost like starting all over again. Yeah, not only the rivalry, but a very good showing in the Red Bull and Springs game. I know it got away from them a little late, but I think they showed some promise, especially offensively, that they haven't seen thus far this year. So you throw in the excitement about that, even though the loss was tough to swallow. And then it's a rivalry game, and it, it needs no further mention how much it means to both clubs, no matter what the records are. Had some solid play offensively, Coach, but I was impressed with Cannon County defensively. We talked about it last week, some uh, some good play the other night. Michael Turgeon, the outstanding red boiling running back, hate to say a non-factor, but really they held him in check most of the night. A.J. Daniel had a good night defensively all around Cannon County, a good, solid defensive effort. Coach Shoulders might talk about how his offense was – uh, very friendly in, in giving away some turnovers. But on the other side of it, you obviously look at the Cannon County defense, and you have to credit them for creating or forcing four turnovers, which really kept them in the ball game and really aided their offense. A lot of possessions for Cannon County starting on the plus side of the field. And good for DeKalb County last week, too, Darvin. They get their first win of the season going to Sparta, and we all thought it would be a very tough game for the Tigers, but a good win and a late come-from-behind win for DeKalb County might help them kind of springboard throughout the rest of this season. I think, you know, we saw that offense that we thought was going to be there early in the season. They showed in, in early in that first game. Then they've had some issues with that. I think the offense now is clicking. Now they're just looking for that complete game performance, uh, matching offense with defense, and they look to do it in Woodbury. And they want to do it in that Smith County fashion, Coach, as we talked about last year. Smith County got off to that 0-4 start. They reel off six wins in a row going to the playoffs hot. DeKalb County starting off 0-3. You get the win. You look down the rest of the games on the schedule. you got to feel good that every game should be competitive and a good opportunity for maybe DeKalb County to launch that kind of run. It's a scenario that Coach Trapp has talked to his team about. It doesn't matter if we finish 7-3, and three, if we win, lose, win, lose, win, lose, win two games, lose one, if it went that way, or if it, we start off losing three and then we win the next seven regardless at the end of the season you're seven and three and you're probably still looking at a playoff game. As we mentioned, we'll talk to Cannon County head football coach TJ Daniel here in just a few moments. Also on the program today, we're going to talk more high school football. Chad Withrow from 104.5 The Zone will be uh, in studio to visit with us today, not just to talk about high school football, but about his new website. It's Tennessee Prep Weekly. You can go online to prepweekly.com and check it out. And uh, guys, High school football is so big in the state of Tennessee, and uh, Chad, of course, a big part of the Zones high school football coverage. They're trying to launch this site to give uh, fans across Tennessee really a comprehensive statewide look at high school football right now only covering the mid-state. But, uh, Darvin, we all know how much folks love high school football. I think they've got potential for this site really to take off. Always a need for more coverage. People are adamant about their high school coverage. Absolutely so, and uh, we're very excited about, you know, of course, being at a game each and every Friday night, and we know the feedback and response we've got from that. Certainly we have to thank all the folks at home that tune in on Friday night, and uh, it's just, I can't wait each and every week to get out there and have another high school game and, of course, the big rivalry game coming up this week. We'll talk about that much more when we come back. It's Armchair Quarterbacks on DTC3. When you need quality parts and repair for your vehicles, think Alexandria Auto Parts. From tire repair to exhaust work, from brakes to oil changes, they've got you covered. Need tires? They stock Summit, Dean, and Cooper tires. Plus, they can order practically any brand. Also, don't forget about the convenient local pickup and delivery service. Alexandria Auto Parts, your car's best friend since 1971. Give them a call at 529-2580. 
No one enjoys being sick, but when it happens to you or someone in your family, visit Tabitha Smith at the Community Wellness Clinic in Woodbury. As a certified family nurse practitioner, she understands the importance of prompt medical help so that you can start feeling better as soon as possible. Certified family nurse practitioner Tabitha Smith at the Community Wellness Clinic in Woodbury. Phone 615-563-7515. When it comes to the power and speed of 4G, there's a new kid in town. Visit DTC Wireless today for a test drive. Back on Armchair Quarterbacks and sent to talk a little Cannon County football as we welcome in studio Cannon County head football coach T.J. Daniel. Coach, good to have you here with us this afternoon. And uh, I know we got a big game coming up this Friday night with DeKalb County. We'll get onto that a little bit later on in the segment. But uh, first thing we do want to talk about is um, this being your second year being the head coach at Cannon County High School. Now, I know you'd served as an assistant. There's a lot of adjustment, I'm sure, going from being an assistant coach to head coach. But maybe talk about some of the differences going into year one as opposed to this year, this being your second year. Was it a little bit easier making the transition going into year two? Yes, I mean, transition, the biggest thing is go from assistant to a head coach. Is You don't know what's in front of you, and you you really never ready. And this year you kind of know a contingency plan, hey, this is what is important, this is what we got to do, rather than last year is everything's just combined in one. Try to do it all at once. Still having that familiarity, though, with the players, with the kids, that had to help a little bit, but still the responsibility, I'm sure, was quite a bit more stepping up to being head coach. Yes, but the good thing about being head coach second year, the kids know what to expect out of you. They know what you know, what to do, what you're expecting, and the times and things like that. So it made it a lot easier. This Cannon County program is five years removed from winning the District 8 AA championship. What do you feel like maybe is the biggest key to getting this Cannon County program back up to contender status among the district among the district contenders? Just consistency and, and keep doing what we're doing, keep getting better at it, and keep growing. Um, if Rome wasn't built in a day, I always say that. You know, you have some setbacks, but you just got to be consistent and, and build your identity, and that's what we're trying to do. Looking at... Being a second-year coach, like Tom was saying, and, and I know that in a rebuilding type of team, you may, as a coach, look at other benchmarks other than win-loss records. What are some things, some ways that the second-year team has improved from the first-year's team that you can measure and say, hey, Cannon County's making some gains. We're making some growth here. When we, start, when we started, really, our measuring stick was back in spring at lift thon We saw how much stronger and faster we'd got over the period of the year. And then now it's just – you know, being in situations, benchmark, how do we compete with somebody? How do we adjust how we handle adversity? Rather than win the ball game, what are we going to do when we get down seven points? Or, um, you know, for instance, like the other night, we're down mid half. How do we handle that rather than, hey, we won the ball game? Whether how we handle adversity and benchmarks, like I told the boys the other night, I said, guys, I saw. We come out start hard the first game. We played a quarter, quarter and a half. Next game we played three quarters. And now we played 40, 40 minutes of football. We got to put 48 together. We got to finish. We got to finish. And those are the things we look for. And that's what I keep harping on in practice and stuff. Hey, we got to finish. We got to do the little things right. Make sure, make sure we're getting our assignments and doing our jobs. You know, and blocking and tackling. I mean, that's the biggest thing in football. Now, that was a tough loss Friday night. Uh, like you said, for 40 minutes, y'all are in control of the ball game. Might have left a few points out on the board, you know, out on the field with some opportunities that you let slip away perhaps. But you've got the game and you've got it in control, and then things kind of turn. Very difficult, very tough loss. How do you get the team to bounce back from that, and what are some positives that you can take away even in a loss? Well, the good thing about that, the boys found that, hey, we can move the football. We can stop a team. I told them, I told them from the get-go, I said, this is not the same Red Bull team as last year. They are better. I said, we've got to go out and do our job, and we've got to play 
our game, and we did. And the positive thing was we played 40 minutes of football, and then, you know, some things, adversity set in. How do we handle it? Do we handle it right? Yes and no. So things like that is what we've done. And the boys, you know, the ones that messed up, they know, hey, coach, I'm sorry. I know you know it. Now, more than last year it was like, why did you do that? Well, I don't know. It's like, hey, I messed up. I'll get it fixed. So it ain't, you know, repeating, you know, why you done it wrong. They know they done it wrong. If they missed a tackle or missed an assignment, I messed up. I'll get it fixed. And that, that's important. That's a real big issue. When you come off a tough loss like that, maybe it's the best time to have one of your biggest rivals coming to play on your home field, and it's certainly DeKalb County, Cannon County have been longtime rivals. And, Coach, I've said this. You know you've been around the rivalry, too. It doesn't matter if DeKalb and Cannon are playing football or if they're playing checkers. It just seems like it, it's a natural rivalry. Talk about the mindset of the team, the motivation, and, and maybe how that differs when you're playing a big rivalry game like DeKalb County, and especially coming off that tough game against Red Boiling. Well, the cat, I like you said, and I always told everybody, just like Gordonsville, Smith County, the big rivals, it don't matter if you're 10-0, 0-10 going to each other. It's like a blank. It's just blank. Nothing else matters but that one game. So that's what we tell our boys. And our boys, I mean, they're fired up about it. They know it's a big rival because we're close. We're similar schools. And they competed with them at lift -thon. We had a lift match with them. They competed with them. So they know, hey, this is our chance. And what we tell them every day, hey, we're 0 0 district. Let's go with the first district win, make the playoffs. I said, We're not out of this hunt until you say we're out. And, and that's one thing I wanted to talk about, too, being 0 0. This is your first district game. So, despite all, everything that's happened, you're still right there in the hunt for the district championship. Really, you can look at your season. You look in the district column, it's 0 0. You're just like, it's just like you're starting all over again. And that's, yes, and that's what we tell our guys every day. Hey, first district game's the cap. It's a big rivalry. We know, we won't, we know what they're going to do. We just got to do our job, and let's go with our first district win. We looked in the first three games, what we told them the other night. These are preseason games, boys. You know, we're in preseason. Now let's go let's go any up and do our job, and let's, let's get the first one. Talking about DeKalb County, talk about some things you see from this Tiger team that, that concerns you, things you know you're going to have to work at to be prepared for on Friday night. We focus on little things, blocking, tackling, doing our jobs, making sure we do the assignments, make sure we don't jump off sides, making sure that we um, – just the very little things, make sure we don't fumble going in the end zone. Stuff like that is what we harp on right now. As far as them, you know, the Cavs are a very good football team. Uh, no doubt about it. I know they've won one game, played, played some tough teams, and, and our guys know that. I don't, I don't hide nothing from our guys and tell them, look, they're going to be tough, and they know it, and they know what we expect going into it. So, I mean, other than that, we just, we just focus on doing our job. You talked uh... – earlier about answer one of my questions about how the offense did move the ball against Red Bull in the Springs. Do you think you have found the identity that you've been looking for with with your personnel and, and your skill set? Yes, we and, and like I said, we have three talented quarterbacks. We we got to looking a while back and we said, look, we better find another quarterback. And we started adjusting some things and the offense didn't change. We just changed our quarterback and a few personnel and we got kids where we felt they could make plays and it showed on Friday night. One thing I want to mention, every time we've ever been to Cannon County to film a game is the fan base. Folks are out there tailgating before the game. They're in the stands. They're cheering. They've got their noisemakers. It's just always a passionate crowd. Talk about what that means to you as a coach to look back there and see all those folks back there supporting you week in, week out, win, lose, draw, or otherwise. And, and talk about what that means also for the players, for the kids, when they know that they've got the support of this very tight-knit community. Well, it ain't really supporting me, it's supporting them boys. That's why I tell them, I said, boys, you got the support. They, you know, and they love it. They, you know, you feed off the crowd. I don't care who you are, you're going to feed off the crowd as a player. I've been there, and, and it means a whole lot. Um, the other night, you know, our fans in the student section, being a high school teacher, they told me, hey, man, we was, in it, we was in it the whole time instead of getting up and leaving. And it means a lot. It just means a lot to boys to me as long as the boys see that and support that boys and them team. That, that's what it's about, and I know the boys, they, they love it because you know, as well as I do, it's disheartening you look and there's only like 10 people in the stands. So, so it does make a, a big difference. Well, we know you're working hard at Cannon County, and uh, Coach, I know you've been at a program that needed a lot of work, and it takes a lot of patience, a lot of time, and I believe you're going to get that with Cannon County. Again, this, the folks here are just tight-knit. They love football. They love sports of all kinds, and uh, just keep up the good work. And Coach Daniel, thanks for joining us. Good luck Friday night throughout the rest of the season. Thank you.
When we come back, Chad Withrow of 104.5 The Zone and Tennessee Prep Weekly will talk some high school football and talk about his new website. All that and more coming up. AQ right here on DTC3. Huff and Puff Trucking supports local athletics. Being part of a team helps to prepare young people for the workforce. And at Huff and Puff Trucking, we've got a great team. Operations. Safety. Long haul drivers. Come be part of our team. We hire good people. At Love Cantrell Funeral Home, we've been family owned and operated for over 55 years. It's our heritage to care for those facing their darkest hours during the loss of a loved one. We don't take the details for granted. Thanks to all of those who have trusted us over the years. Stop by or call anytime to speak with one of our knowledgeable staff about pre-planning your funeral or to answer questions about the plans of a loved one. Love Cantrell Funeral Home. We're at our best when you need us most. Look around, and you'll see a common theme throughout each of our lives. Technology, and it's becoming more important to how we live each day. And DTC Broadband is with you every step of the way. From the music that you listen to, to the way our children learn. We take a lot of pride in empowering what you do, so that the future for us all is as bright as ever. DTC Broadband. Call today and get connected. Back for another segment of AQ with a little more high school football talk. And uh, this guy down at the end here, well, you may not recognize the face, but you'll know the voice as soon as you hear it, If you, especially if you're a fan of 104.5 The Zone. Chad Withrow, the Midday 180, and uh, prime time. It seems like every time I turn the radio on, there you are. You're like uh, on at uh, different segments of the day. But also, Chad, what we really want to talk about today is a new website that uh, you and Chris Eeks are doing called uh, Tennessee Prep Weekly. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, what was the idea behind it? And uh, just tell us all about it. You know, I appreciate that, Tom. And it's, you know, it started out as an idea where we wanted to kind of create a community for high school football fans. And you guys are well aware of the passion in high school football and the communities and everything else. So what we've done with PrepWeekly.com is we've brought together a lot of different people, whether it be college students and coaches or you know, different people from different walks of life that all are concerned about high school football, and we're putting it all in one place. So we've got team previews, we've got district helmet schedules, we've got game recaps, roster stats, a lot of different things there. We've got players of the week for different counties each and every week throughout the season. So just a place where high school football fans or parents or players, or whoever it may be, they can kind of come to one spot and get the info that they need, and that's what we're hoping to accomplish with PrepWeekly.com. And it is PrepWeekly.com. If you're looking for it online, be sure to go visit. Now, right now you're just covering Mid-State solely. Is that correct? And you're hoping to expand it from there, though, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's correct. Right now we're focusing on the Mid-State. You know, it's better to start small and then expand out. Right. Uh, you don't want to start too big and not be able to cover everything. So the idea is maybe next year, maybe the year after, we'll extend into East Tennessee. And then after that, we'll go into West Tennessee. But right now it's strictly from the Cumberland Plateau to the Tennessee River in the West, and we're sticking with the Mid-State. Let's talk about high school football. Of course, Tennessee is a hotbed for football. Everyone loves, whether it's Titans, Vanderbilt, Tennessee. There are football fans all across the state, but there's something different about high school football, and I know you know this. You've kind of got the pulse on it with the Friday night show. What, what do you see as the biggest difference in, in terms of passion for high school football as opposed to other levels of football? You know, it's, I think it's because you're so closely connected to it. Yeah, it's, it's more personal, you know, than a lot of other things. We watch the NFL. You know, we might root for our fantasy football team or certain players on a team, but we don't know them that well, right? You know, it might be your nephew playing. It might be your son. It might be your brother. You're so closely connected to that community that you're from. And if you don't have relatives playing high school football, you're still, that, that's your home, right? That's right. where you're from. So, so many people, everyone is touched in some way by high school football. And you can't say that about other levels of sport or football specifically, and I think that's what really draws people together is kind of that closeness. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've talked to some people this year uh, with us being solely concentrated on high school. Talk about the big thing right now going on is the reclassification. You know, the six divisions in football, 
and I know you have your finger on the pulse, uh, like some of our other guests. Talk about what you think personally about it and what you're hearing back and feedback from all those coaches and, and you know, really administrators that you deal with daily. Right, yeah. I, I think that no matter what system you go to, someone's going to complain about it. And, you know, the, when they came out with a Z plan, when this plan originally came out, it was, well, this is going to fix all the problems with the playoff bracket and everything else. Well, you find out a year, two years into it, it doesn't fix everything, and there are always – a group of people that are going to complain about it and not like it. I, I feel the same way about this new system. I think face value looks great. It's easy to know who's going to go in the playoffs. It's the old region system. Top four, you know, one through 5A, they're going to go. It's simple for coaches to know about. You have to do well in your district or your region, and you're going to do well and get in the playoffs. But then you have all of 6A going to the playoffs. So then is it fair for a 1-9 and nine, 6A school to go to the playoffs when maybe a 6-4, and 5-5, five and 5A five, five school? That's just a little bit smaller. They have a great season and can't go to the playoffs because of the different system. Me, personally, I think it's great because I want more football. And this is yeah. going to give you more football games because you're going to have every team in 6A making the playoffs. But it, it's tough. It, it's, it's always going to be worse for someone else, I think. And obviously with your new website and, and the excitement it's generated, you have so many fans that pay attention to what you say. And you were talking about just a moment ago, I think it also, with your new website, the boom of really good football in the yeah. mid-state area. Some of these players over the last couple of years that have come out that obviously have went to UT, went to other Division One programs, it, it is a boon to have this kind of talent. Good time to start a website. Oh, it's it? perfect timing, and we're all about the same age here. And, uh, you know, I remember when I'm going through high school or even right out of high school, you might have three, four, five guys from the mid-state that are your top-tier SEC-level school, you know, yeah. players. Now you've got 20. Uh, next year you might have 30. I mean, there are so many guys, and, and outside of that, it's not just SEC-level talent. You know, you've got a player from Father Ryan that's headed to Wake Forest. You've got great players going and playing at the top level of Division I football, and even so many more players going to the OVC or, or levels like that, Sunbelt. Uh, it's just uh, so much fun to watch kind of the evolution of high school football in the air. I think it's better coaching. I think it's bigger population, obviously, and it's, it's better players all around, and it's an exciting time to be a high school football fan in this area. I want to jump back on the reclassification for a moment, and, and we know this because in the area we cover, we see a lot of the rural schools that, that are tweeners almost, and, mm -hmm. and I'll use the DeKalb County, a Cannon County, and a Smith County as good examples of schools that, that kind of fall into, there are a lot of schools in this region, but they're of different sizes. So they got, you're going to have a DeKalb County and a Cannon County going to Giles, Fairview, in that area. What do you think, what could you look at and see, and I know what you said is correct, there's no perfect solution, but how do we make it to where everybody's happy? Because I know some of the rural schools sometimes kind of get left out or kind of get pushed into directions where they really don't have natural rivalries. Right, yeah, and, and that's tough too, the distance, you know, the, the cost and travel and everything else like you brought up. Uh, this is probably controversial, but here's where I think it's headed. It's going to be a public-private split, and I think that's, you know, and then you still have city school versus rural school, depending on, you know, size of school and everything else, but... There's just really no fair way to do it for everyone, and I think there's so many allegations and there's such bickering going back and forth between public and private schools that it's inevitable that at some point it's going to split and then you're going to have you know, different classifications of private schools even. Right now you've got the Division II schools that can be financially aided. Well, you're going to have schools that don't have financial aid. You know, they're going to go into a smaller classification. I think you're going to even spread out possibly more public schools, so you try to get it as fair as possible and you're playing against your level of competition that you need to be in year in, year out, it's tough to make work. I don't envy Bernard Childress and the no. people over there and their jobs because you're always going to be answering complaints from someone. And I really think that uh, as much as it pains me to say that because I love watching the private schools play the public schools time to time, I think it's inevitably going to split public and private. I don't think there is an easy answer, but I think TSSAA, you got to take your hat off, like you say, to Bernard Childress and all those guys trying to make it right, trying to make the best right. solution as possible. We'd be remiss not to have you on the show and not talk a little bit about 104.5 The Zone and your role there. And the, I know that's got to be a great job. You're a sports nut like we are to go in every day and talk sports. Does yeah. it get any better than that? It's awesome. <laughs> and uh, Paul Kuharski is exactly as he sounds on air. That's usually the first question that, I have to answer. That's the only drawback, right? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, you know, it's, 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 an, it's an endless adventure every day you show up for work for sure. But no, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's funny because I have friends uh, who might work in accounting or, or attorneys and they're going online and they're checking ESPN.com or they're checking PrepWeekly.com about high school football or different sites and I get to say that's my job. 
you know, and I'm watching football on a Saturday afternoon. Well, honey, I, I can't go mow the yard right now because I'm working. Can't right. you say I'm working here when you're watching football. <laughs> so it's it's a really cool thing to do, and uh, I love it. And I don't take it for granted any day that I go to work. And it's certainly exciting. And like you said earlier, Tom, uh, it feels like I'm on all the time because I am. You know, I'm on the midday 180 from 12 to 3, prime time from 6 to 7 every day, all the high school football coverage from 6 to 11 p.m. on Friday night. It, it's certainly a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. Well, and I was going to say, so many people listen to you, and they really enjoy your shows. Talk a little bit about your journey. There's some people out there that I'm sure would like to know how they may uh, follow the same kind of path. Well, don't follow my path, uh, first <laughs> off, for anyone out there that, that might be wanting to do that, because mine's a little bit unorthodox. You know, I went to the University of Tennessee from Mount Juliet High School originally, play, played basketball and baseball growing up there, um, went to UT, and came back and did an internship for 104.5 The Zone. And uh, George Plaster at the time, who was there and worked for his show with Willie Donick and, and Darren McFarland, and uh, was kind of an executive producer for that show for years. And it just started slow. You know, I, I went to school to, to major in sports business. I wanted to be Rustin Webster. I wanted to be a general manager for, for a team and not be a broadcaster. So it's just one of those things where I started doing some reporting on high school football on Friday nights, started going on air a little bit, and I was okay at it. And just kind of grew from there. You know, it's something I never really knew that I had. I just loved sports my whole life. But I could kind of naturally do it a little bit. And then um, just grew from there. And, and here we are 10 years later. And I've been at 104.5 The Zone the whole time. So it's been great. Well, hey, we enjoy listening to you. Of course, we're fans of the radio station. Well, thank you very and, uh, much. We enjoy all you guys do to help promote us also. I know on Friday night you yeah. do the live cut-ins and uh, a lot of folks. Well, I want to say, too, you guys do a tremendous job. And I, I say that all the time to you, but I, I mean it. Uh, as far as the production quality and what you guys do from a broadcasting standpoint, tremendous. So we love uh, tuning into your game on, uh, on Friday nights. And I was laughing because last Friday we go to the game and every time we listen live, something big was happening in the game. So it was perfect time. So good job on that. You, Thank you, you. You added the drama. We enjoy it, but we, we hear all the time, uh, hey, I was listening to you, 104.5 The Zone, and we heard you on the other night, but we appreciate you doing that. And, of course, his website, prepweekly.com. It's the Tennessee Prep Weekly website, and you can follow high school football. It's going to grow, get bigger and better. It's already great, so be sure to check it out. Chad, thanks so much for joining us today. And, uh, Come back, talk high school anytime. Thanks for having me, guys. Chad Withrow with us here on Armchair Quarterbacks. We'll come back. We'll talk about matchups from around the region and more. AQ on DTC3. When you need quality parts and repair for your vehicles, think Alexandria Auto Parts. From tire repair to exhaust work, from brakes to oil changes, they've got you covered. Need tires? They stock Summit, Dean, and Cooper tires. Plus, they can order practically any brand. Also, don't forget about the convenient local pickup and delivery service. Alexandria Auto Parts, your car's best friend since 1971. Give them a call at 529-2580. No one enjoys being sick, but when it happens to you or someone in your family, visit Tabitha Smith at the Community Wellness Clinic in Woodbury. As a certified family nurse practitioner, she understands the importance of prompt medical help so that you can start feeling better as soon as possible. Certified Family Nurse Practitioner Tabitha Smith at the Community Wellness Clinic in Woodbury. Phone 615-563-7515. When you do business with DTC, your digital journey begins. Information without boundaries is made easily accessible, while physical boundaries are secured and monitored. We help you promote your expertise externally while connecting mission-critical infrastructure internally. Let DTC Business Solutions join you on your digital journey. Contact Tish Smith today. Back on AQ, and we want to thank all of our sponsors each week for taking good care of us here on Armchair Quarterbacks, including DJ's Pizza and Steakhouse. They provide us some good eats each and every week prior to our show. Jimmy Lambadonis and all the great folks there. And Hey, if you didn't get out there and try that chicken Alfredo dinner last weekend, it's back by popular demand for a second weekend in a row. The chicken Alfredo dinner, only $7.99. If that's not your taste, how about some pizza? They got the best pizza around. Check that out. Great Italian dishes, steaks, and so much more. That's DJ's Pizza and Steakhouse, phone 563-2821, located in downtown Woodbury. Well, guys, let's take a look at our cumulative standings from last week. 
And, well, I sort of fell back to the pack. Darvin's jumped in there. I had a rough high school week. We kind of balanced it out along the rest of the way there. But uh, as it looks right now, Darvin's taking the lead among the uh, high school picks. I've jumped up there in the college, and we're just all a little fair to Midland there with the uh, NFL after a couple of weeks. But uh, one game separating first and third place right now with our cumulative standings. We'll go and take a look at our high school picks and talk about some of the matchups. And uh, guys, right off the top, Upperman, Gordonsville, we're all going with the Bs. Gordonsville right now, we were all a little taken aback, I think, by their performance at Monterey. Coach, uh, you know, we knew Monterey pretty tough out uh, against anyone they take on, but I don't think we saw them beating Gordonsville in the fashion that, uh, that they managed to do so. For a, a casual fan of football, you pretty much go on the history and, or the recent history of a high school program or college or professional and you think, well, this team's generally pretty good year in, year out. They're going to the playoffs. Won the state a couple of years ago. And then here's Monterey, who barely gets any ink whatsoever. And so you just off the cuff, you go ahead and you take a team like Gordonsville, not really taking into consideration the injuries they've had or what they've lost to graduation or things like that, or perhaps the growth in a uh, Monterey team. And we, I, I was certainly surprised by the outcome. The only pick we really have different this week amongst our high school picks is Watertown Red Boiling Springs, and uh, this was kind of a back and forth for me, but uh, I went with Red Boiling. Darvin, though, you like Watertown, and uh, the Watertown offense, they've still struggled 14 points through four games. Can they get it together against Red Boiling, who, as we saw last Friday night, an improved Red Boiling team? Yeah, the reason I went with Watertown is I, I think, simply put, I look at what Watertown's been able to do defensively, and I like what they've been able to do defensively all year. And they have played a pretty tough schedule, a much tougher schedule than Red Bull and Springs. And so I just feel like that when you factor all that in, I think it's a very low-scoring game. But I think Watertown gets it on, you know, special teams, a fumble, and we saw some turnovers by Red Bull and Springs this past week. I just like Watertown's defense, and I think their schedule has prepared them to win this game more so than Red Bull and Springs. Trousdale County coming off a 35-0 loss to Friendship. will have good pasture. Good pasture really struggling this year. At 0-4, we all like Smith County at home against York. I expect a lot of points in this ball game. I just think uh, these two are kind of rivals. You don't hear as much about that rivalry, but uh, really kind of a rivalry between the two. And we're all going to take DeKalb County in the game over Cannon County. As we go to our collegiate picks, I like that first game right off the top. Number 5, Auburn at number 20, Kansas State, both coming off a of bye week. Coach, i got to go with the SEC in this, but it's never easy going out to Manhattan to take on K-State. Well, that was my deal. I was looking at Auburn. I was looking at number five ranking. I'm thinking SEC, uh, just how well they performed last year uh, you know, across the board. I know it's not last year's team, but those were some of the main reasons I chose Auburn. We all like Florida State, but Darvin, is this a trap game for the number one Seminoles? We've not maybe seen the best of Florida State football yet, and Clemson typically plays FSU pretty tough. Number 22 Clemson at number one Florida State. Yeah, I, I consider it a possible upset pick in this game, but Clemson just doesn't quite have the horses, I think, to pull it off. I could see it being close throughout three, three and a half quarters, but I think ultimately talent and the talent pool that Florida State has and will win this out. Oklahoma coming off their win over Tennessee. They will travel to West Virginia. We all like Boomer Sooner there. Darvin, I know you love the U, and they're going to Nebraska. I love matchups like this. Traditional football powers, Miami at Nebraska. What, what do you see in the U? Well, neither team has performed extremely well this year, but Nebraska, by the skin of their teeth, has been pulling out some games against much lesser opponents. Miami is for real. They have one of the best running backs in the country, Duke Johnson. I'm, I just feel like Miami's got the talent advantage comparing scores, and you know what that can do. They can get you into trouble. But I like Miami in this case. I just think they've got more talent, especially on the offensive side of the ball, to take care of Nebraska. Middle Tennessee, what about that three-overtime thriller over Western Kentucky? What a ball game that turned out to be. I'm going with Memphis, and, and I'm going to be the sucker here that says, hey, this was the Memphis team that two weeks ago went to UCLA and took the Bruins down to the wire. And that may have just been a, I don't know, it may have been a fluke, but I'm going to take Memphis against the MTSU. But I thought that was a great game for Middle. Great game and a great rivalry with Western Kentucky. Um, Memphis is a seven, seven and a half point pick in yeah. favor and that kind of thing. And you're talking about going on the road. Uh, I just don't, I hope Middle does not just uh, fall off the table after last week's big win. Guys, as we look at our NFL picks, for only the fifth time in NFL history, there's a Super Bowl rematch the year after that Super Bowl was played. Denver at Seattle. Now, you know there's the revenge factor, Darvin, with Denver 
But uh, I, we're all feeling like Seattle's going to be motivated after their loss to San Diego. Yeah, really oscillated on this game. I, I think Peyton, it's not a big game. It's not the Super Bowl. But I, I think Peyton is going to be so prepared for this game. I'm still going to go with Seattle. I'm going to go with the best defensive team in this situation. But don't be surprised if, if Peyton and the Broncos win and win in an in a unusual fashion because I think he's going to be motivated personally. But I think Seattle's defense is going to be motivated, Coach, and that's why I went with the Seahawks. Well, I like, I like Seattle uh, to bounce back. I also think that, uh, like Darvin said, if you put Peyton Manning and a new rule change as far as something that may be even called the Sherman rule, you know, that they may take away them. Green Bay did not take advantage of that. Um, I think San Diego did, and it really hurt uh, Seattle. And I think Peyton Manning and that, that receiving core can do that, but I just look for Seattle to be really uh, upset over last week's loss. We mentioned San Diego and their win over Seattle. It's the Chargers headed to Buffalo. Are the Bills for real at 2-0? and They take it out on the Dolphins last week. I got the bolts here, but guys, you like the Bills. Darvin, is this a true possible playoff contender in Buffalo this year? Uh, I think they're a contender. They're, I really like their defensive line. I think that's their strength. I think that's where they've got – they're going to make some hay. But, uh, yeah, I think they're in the mix. I mean, you know, you look at the AFC East, that is up for grabs. So New England and who else? And, and that's yeah, but I'm not sure at. New England is a lock gimme right now. They're, they're sitting at one and one. Who's going to show up? Which team? Is, is it going to be the Dolphin team that beat or is it going to be – a San Diego team that lost week one. but yet I think beat, Miami you know, who, is the best show up team where? in the East. I, I do think Miami is the best AFC East team. Over New England. Over New England. All right. We'll see as it plays out, of course. Uh, the next game is going to be one. I say you'll see a lot of footballs flying between Matt Stafford and Aaron Rodgers. Detroit at Green Bay, or actually it's Green Bay, Detroit. I'm going to go with the Packers, though. Historically, Detroit coaches played well against Green Bay in the Dome. They have. They're at home. And I, I go back to Green Bay's defense. Uh, still maybe a work in process trying to pick up some pieces from last year. It, it certainly didn't help them against Seattle, but that is Seattle in Seattle. Uh, just not sold on their defense. Another surprise 2 no team, the Arizona Cardinals home against San Francisco. We all like the Niners to get it together out in the desert, and we're all taking the Bengals. Titans, as good as they looked in week one, certainly had some issues in week two. And, uh, and again, for all you loved about Jake Locker, Darvin, in week one, there you see some chinks in the armor there in week two as a uh, Dallas comes to town, and it wasn't just Locker. I think you've got to look at the Titans as a team and just did not have their A game against the Cowboys. If you want to be concerned about something, be concerned about this. The Bengals had a right at 45 carries between Giovanni Bernard and Jeremy Hill in that contest this past week. If they see that film of DeMarco Murray running everywhere against the Titans, you could expect at least 40 to 50 combined carries for those two backs again. All right, folks, go on Twitter, make your picks. At DTC3TV, you can do so and a pick against our armchair quarterback panel. Let's see how you do as far as sizing up the matchups this upcoming weekend. We'll wrap it up with a two-minute warning when we come back to armchair quarterbacks on DTC3. Huff and Puff Trucking supports local athletics. Being part of a team helps to prepare young people for the workforce. And at Huff and Puff Trucking, we've got a great team. Accounting. Maintenance. Local driver. Come be part of our team. We hire good people. At Love Cantrell Funeral Home, we've been family owned and operated for over 55 years. It's our heritage to care for those facing their darkest hours during the loss of a loved one. We don't take the details for granted. Thanks to all of those who have trusted us over the years. Stop by or call anytime to speak with one of our knowledgeable staff about pre-planning your funeral or to answer questions about the plans of a loved one. Love Cantrell Funeral Home. We're at our best when you need us most.
sure to follow our armchair quarterback panel. You can see our Twitter handles at the bottom of the page. You can follow us, of course, individually. You can also follow us collectively at DTC3TV. And as we mentioned during the last segment, tweet us your uh, football picks for this week, questions, ideas for the show, anything. We'd appreciate it. And follow us along here at Armchair Quarterbacks. Time now for the two-minute drill. Rapid fire final thoughts as we wrap up this week's edition of AQ. We'll go to the end. Darvin Gill to start us off. Darvin. Thanks, Tom. Tonight, just going to talk a little bit about something we're going to see this week, and we do cover quite a bit, and it's rivalry games. And this is for our younger viewers out there. Appreciate this opportunity to play a rival, to play in this atmosphere. No matter what sport you may play, if you're watching and you play other sports, or if you're a football player, and obviously you're getting ready for a big rivalry game between Cannon and DeKalb. And it doesn't matter if it's Smith or Gordonsville, Cannon or DeKalb, or any of the great rivalries that we are able to cover or across the mid-state. Enjoy this. As a former athlete, I think back to those rivalry games and those big moments in those games where the stadium was packed and people were excited, people were cheering, and there was noisemakers, there was all this thing going around you. Take the time to enjoy it. I know you're young and you really don't understand it, and you probably say, man, that old guy, he sounds weird. But I'm just telling you, enjoy this type of moment because sooner or later you no longer have that moment and it's something you'll look back on fondly. So remember as many of the details as you possibly can. Coach? My son usually asks me about uh, this player or that player and if they're good. And, of course, if they're in the NFL, they are good, even if they're not a starter, if they're a backup. I'm going to focus my attention on Jake Locker. Yes, he's good, or he would not be drafted. He would not be a starting quarterback in the NFL. He's not the sexy pick that I think the Titans thought they were going to get. The problems that he had at Washington with accuracy or maybe arm strength have followed him to the Titans. Also, you compound the fact that he's been, able to un he's been unable to finish a season looking at his injuries for the three-plus years. When you start looking at his numbers, the deeper that he gets into a season, the more games that he plays and the more completions that he has, the less his quarterback rating seems to be. All of this thrown in, I'm not sure that he's going to be the quarterback to lead the Titans into the playoffs. Well, speaking of the Tennessee Titans, being in downtown Nashville Sunday, no, I did not go to LP Field to watch the game, but I did accompany some friends and go watch the game with some friends on television. But seeing the crowd on television at LP Field and seeing the crowd in Nashville after the game was over, you can already tell, well, Titans fans just aren't excited about their NFL team yet. Will it get worse? Time will only tell if they go to Cincinnati and lose and fall to one and two. Will they drop off much more? What about the Tennessee Vols? They go to Oklahoma and have a pretty good showing for a young Vols team, but they still get beat. What if they go to Georgia and lose? Then to Alabama, then to some of those other games. Will the Vol faithful start to fall off? One area we don't need the Fairweather fans, folks. I know we're going to have them at NFL College, especially with those exorbitant ticket prices, but high school football, these are kids that are still playing for the love of the game each and every Friday night. You can't beat a Friday night atmosphere. That crisp, cool fall air out there, that tailgating, those good folks coming out there. Yeah, some of them's mom and dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, the neighbor from down the road, that guy you go to church with, but still you just can't beat the overall atmosphere of high school football. Each and every Friday night we bring you a game here on DTC3, but we always tell you, Go out and enjoy the Friday Night Lights. If you are a traditional, pure football lover, you cannot beat the Friday Night Lights. So get out and support these high school kids and enjoy some real down-to-earth, still pure-at-heart football any chance you get. That's going to wrap it up for this week's edition of Iron Chair Quarterbacks. If you're watching on Thursday night, replay of Cannon County Red Boiling Springs coming your way next. If you're watching on Friday, get set for football game night from Fred Schwartz Field as Cannon County hosts the DeKalb County Tigers. For Darvin and the coach, I'm Tom Duggan. For Armchair Quarterback, saying so long. Till next week.